If you remember back to the part on Plato, you'll remember he talked about removing children from the manners and habits of their parents, and indeed abolishing the family unit as a means of wiping out the old and bringing in the new way of things. The United Nations likes that idea, and it has instigated a war on parents through its education system. Youth Ant said, The world will not change and find peace if there is not a new education. Dr. Brock Chisholm, former director of the United Nations World Health Organization, identified family loyalty, amongst other things, as a hindrance to this when he said, to achieve world government, it is necessary to remove from the minds of men their individualism, loyalty to family traditions, national patriotism and religious dogmas. Brock Chisholm also echoed Plato when he said, What basic psychological distortion can be found in every civilization of which we know anything? The only psychological force capable of producing these perversions is morality, the concept of right and wrong. The reinterpretation and eventual eradication of the concept of right and wrong are the belated objectives of nearly all psychotherapy. If the race is to be freed from its crippling burden of good and evil, it must be psychiatrists who take the original responsibility. So the UN thinks that children having a concept of right and wrong is a bad thing. At first children must have their views of right and wrong skewed and then eventually taught that there is no such thing as right and wrong at all. The NGO that looks after education in the United Nations is UNESCO. UNESCO's constitution was written by an Illuminati mason called Archibald MacLeish. He was a member of the Skull and Bone Society. The first director of UNESCO was Julian Huxley, the brother of Aldous Huxley. He was the 1962 Humanist of the Year and a member of the Communistic Colonial Bureau of the British Fabian Society. He was also a signatory on the Humanist Manifesto too. Under Huxley's guidance, the United Nations produced a document called the Handbook for Teachers and it reminded teachers of their role in preparing children for a world organisation. Huxley said in 1948, Its education programme can stress the ultimate need for world political unity and familiarise all the peoples with the implications of the transfer of full sovereignty from separate nations to a world organisation. Political unification and some sort of world government will be required. UNESCO explained, If UNESCO is attacked on the grounds that it is helping to prepare the world's people for world government, then it is an error to burst forth with apologetic statements and denials. Let us face it, the job of UNESCO is to help create and promote world citizenship. When faced with such a charge, let us by all means affirm it from the housetops. They're not even pretending to hide it. So in whatever country you live, you may notice the media and education systems encouraging you to feel ashamed of your nationality, your history or your politicians. This is designed to remove your allegiance from your nation so that you are more ready to accept global citizenship. But what about this war on parents they're waging? On the opening page of the UNESCO handbook it says, Before the child has entered school, his mind has already been profoundly marked and often injuriously by earlier influences, i.e. parents, first gained however dimly in the home. UNESCO thinks that if you have been teaching your child the truth about God in the home, then you have injured their mind and that this needs to be undone in the school. Page 58 of the UNESCO handbook says, As we have pointed out, it is frequently the family that infects the child with extreme nationalism. The school should therefore use the means described earlier to combat family attitudes. The whole aim is to undermine Judeo-Christian values and to eradicate it as an infection from the minds of children. Peter Hoagland perhaps sums up their attitude when he says, Fundamental Bible-believing people do not have the right to indoctrinate their children in their religious beliefs because we, the state, are preparing them for the year 2000 when America will be part of a one-world global society and their children will not fit in. They are, in fact, encouraging children to rebel against their parents' instruction and by doing so they are, of course, breaking the fifth commandment to honour your father and mother. On page 8 of the handbook for teachers it says, the kindergarten or infant school has a significant part to play in the child's education. Not only can it correct many of the errors of home training, but it can also prepare the child for membership at about age seven in a group of his own age and habits. 
the first of many such social identifications that he must achieve on his way to membership in the world society. Again, they see the teaching of parents as errors that need to be corrected. Parents are today, therefore, being asked to hand their kids over to a system that will at the earliest possible age begin indoctrinating them with their philosophical ideas that are contrary to any Christians. We can also see from this quotation that they believe peer pressure will aid their cause. Today, because of the economic squeeze on average working families, along with the Lilith-inspired feminist movement, many mothers have either been taught to think of motherhood as something inferior to careerism or have financially been left with no choice but to go to work and leave their child in the hands of others. This separation between kids and parents is good for the United Nations. Full destruction of family units, as prescribed by Plato, also helps their cause because it forces single mothers to work and leaves the family without a strong male figure, which research proves is very important to the health, happiness and success of children as they grow up. More to the point, the home is then robbed of strong male spiritual leaders. Satan has been waging a sustained attack on men and male identity for a long time in the knowledge that if he can render them weak, disillusioned and stunted spiritually, the rest of his work becomes a lot easier. I feel very strongly that Christian men need to waken up to the battle that is being waged on them and their masculinity. Christian families need to waken up as a whole to the fact that Satan wants to destroy that cohesive unit. This attack on male identity in particular is a whole other subject that needs to be addressed but we need a generation of spiritual warriors here who are prepared to take the fight to the enemy. Some Christian parents have already seen potential harm in the state education system and have chosen to homeschool their children or at least pull their kids out of certain classes. This is, of course, not acceptable in the coming New World Order. In Germany, it is already illegal to homeschool children and in March 2011, a couple were jailed for withdrawing their child from a sex education class. Here in the UK on 18th of October 2009, the British government schools minister Diana Johnson went on to BBC Radio 4's Sunday programme hosted by Roger Bolton and explained that some evangelical parents may need monitoring by the state because they may intimidate their children with ideas about God, sin and hell. She explained that they were reviewing the rules of home education and as part of the shake-up, the government wanted state education officials to have the right to interview homeschooled children without their parents being present. The intention, of course, is to identify and prosecute those parents who are giving their children Christian ideas that go against those of the New World Order. Are these the actions of a free nation when the government wants to prosecute people who think the wrong things, believe the wrong things and speak the wrong things? It seems to me we don't realise how dark things have become. So worried are the UK government that Christian parents could keep their children out of the system that they reviewed the homeschooling policy three times in just four years. Just a couple of months before that interview on the BBC, an American court ruled that a homeschooled girl aged 10 should have to start attending a state-run school because her views were deemed to be too Christian. Her mother's attorney stated that the court decided that the girl's religious beliefs are a bit too sincerely held and need to be mixed amongst other worldviews. Access to Christian ideas is not to be tolerated in the New World Order. Let's take the sex education issue in which the German couple took a stand as a little case study of where things are going. Back in October 16, 1969, the co-founder of UNESCO, Reinhold Niebuhr, undersigned an advert from the Sexuality, Information and Education Council of the United States, or SICUS for short. It read, It is the position of SICUS that contraceptive services should be available to all, including minors, who should enjoy the same rights of free and independent access to contraceptive care as do others. It is the position of SICUS that the use of explicit sexual materials, sometimes referred to as pornography, can serve a variety of important needs in the lives of countless individuals. So UNESCO approve of the idea that everyone, including minors, should have access to contraception and they approve of the use of explicit pornography in their education. Fast forward to 9th of March 2011, where it was reported in the UK that explicit and permissive sexual material has just been cleared for children as young as five years old in the name of education. Despite this education already having led to explosions in sexual promiscuity, disease and teenage pregnancies, this line has not been abandoned. Quite the opposite. 
the age at which children have access to it is reduced. Furthermore, free contraception is now widely available to facilitate early sexual activity, which is promoted as safe, but which is anything but. Disease has skyrocketed. These policies daily help destroy the lives of young people around the world. The reason it's not being reversed is because they're not really concerned about the well-being of individuals. The primary aim of the whole United Nations organization is to usher in the required conditions for their Christ Lucifer. The end justifies the means in their eyes. As the parents in Germany found out, they are jailed if they try to keep their children away from it. Huxley's UNESCO handbook even perpetuated the old ideas of eugenics, saying, Thus, even though it is quite true that any radical eugenic policy will be for many years politically and psychologically impossible, it will be important for UNESCO to see that the eugenic problem is examined with the greatest care, and that the public mind is informed of the issues at stake, so that much that is now unthinkable may at least become thinkable.